and gentlemen, I'm not sure I was told that it was Robert Schumann in John way, but I think that that symbolizes how uncertain the the resource of of, uh, of that quotation is. Uh, and uh, I totally agree with you, uh, Ferry, that uh, the content of the sentence is, is more important than, than the source of the sentence. And uh, I think that is a fundamental belief in Europe now that uh, if we have to restart, and it's uh, still an open question if we have to restart or, or not, uh, the, the coexistence of, of the European nations and other communities we should start with culture, just because uh, there's, a, there's a time uh, uh, which, uh, which reflects the importance of identities and sometimes questions identities. So we have to start to build up um, a European identity, which is not antagonistic to any other loyalties and any other identities, but which is built on the other the richness of loyalties and identities. And uh, that's why we initiated uh, this year, the European Year of Cultural Heritage, and that's why I'm very happy that uh, I can be here, and thank you for your invitations. I think you, your organizers, are probably the most proper persons and people to talk about uh, cultural uh, richness of, uh, of the European Union, because you as interpreters, you experience this richness and difficulties of, uh, of the, of the intercommunication among cultures, uh, either local or, or regional and national cultures. And I hope that uh, this European Year uh, will be your chance to rekindle a sense of belonging to our shared European space and open up opportunities for people from all backgrounds to experience, to experience what it feels like to be European. This means that we need to reach people, especially young people, where they are in their communities, small villages, towns, cities, and capitals. The European Union is much about Kursek about the people who live here, as it is about West Bay, my home city, which is just celebrating the Polish-Hungarian friendship, the day of the Polish-Hungarian friendship, and this year, West Bay is the capital of the Polish-Hungarian friendship, and just hosting the two presidents, uh, Poland's president and, and Hungary's president, uh, this afternoon. <coughs> and uh, there, there are many other big and small communities around Europe. The year allows us to delve into our traditions, the memories and the monuments of our past. From these memories we can learn a lot about what is important for the future. We can raise awareness of the many cultural influences that have shaped our identities. We can reconnect with our roots as Europeans and we can promote innovation while respecting the historical value of heritage. And interpret Europe can have a big impact on how people interact with cultural heritage. Sometimes learning about heritage can be more effective if it takes place outside the classroom, right where events happen and people live. This can be experienced through guided walks in towns, exhibitions in galleries, or visits to natural beauty spots. To a great extent, this experience of hands-on heritage interpretation is the link between education and cultural heritage. It also fits very well with one of my priorities for the year, to focus on children and young people. Cultural heritage is a bridge from the past to the future, and who better to build this bridge than young people? When we kicked off the, the European Year of Cultural Heritage, we gave young people the opportunity to interpret heritage themselves via the social media platform Instagram. We launched a competition for photos showing the tradition and explaining what it meant to the young people involved. The winning photo was a beautifully lit bridge at Florence annual light festival. 
this competition showed very clearly that young Europeans are not only interpreting heritage very creatively, but that they identify themselves with the very idea of a common cultural heritage. Doing this, they make a very powerful point that a European identity, far from threatening our other identities, actually enriches them. Many young people seem to feel intuitively that embracing a European identity complements and strengthens our local, regional, and national identities. That, in this way, we become part of a community of millions who have such rich histories and interwoven cultures. By adopting a European identity, we can share all of this and contribute to the evolution of Europe's shared cultural heritage. I developed my own European identity under very different circumstances than today's young generation. It was uh, 1980, and I was on a family holiday to East Berlin. I was incredibly excited to go. And of course, this being the dark days of the Cold War, we couldn't access West Berlin. We didn't have the right passports. You know, there were two types of passports at uh, that time in Hungary. There were the blue passports, which was for the privileged one, who could go to, to the West European countries. And that was the, I would say, the usual red one, which was a limited edition of the passport, uh, restricted only to East European countries. And even Yugoslavia and the USSR was an exception for that because we could go to Yugoslavia and USSR every second year if we could. The USSR was a very tricky uh, country and a trip to Orient, we organized it. Um, so we, we didn't have the right passport, so all I could do was look over to the west from the top of the TV tower in the eastern part of the city. I couldn't reach out to people less than five kilometers away. When the communist regimes collapsed some years later, I remember the joy of seeing Hungarian men and women and children and people from other countries <coughs> finally reuniting with our fellow citizens in the West. Finally, we were free and able to express ourselves politically, culturally, artistically, without fear of reprisal or arrest. For me, this freedom, this possibility of broadening our horizon and connecting with each other is at the heart of what it means to be European. I'm fortunate enough to have had this transformative experience, as I suppose many of you have. But it is not a given. Not everyone is willing to embrace their multiple identities or even aware of how to take the best from this. What can we do to help foster a European sense of identity and create a more socially cohesive society? How can the European Year of Cultural Heritage support this? Well, I believe that by celebrating, exploring and cherishing our tangible and intangible European cultural heritage, we will show more people that there is more that, that unites us than divides us. This unity is derived from our shared heritage, our common historical experiences, and our common European values, which we should take extra effort to promote respect for human dignity, democracy, equity, the rule of law, and the respect for human rights, to name but a few. This unity takes nothing away from our diverse personal, <coughs> national, and cultural experiences. With the year truly underway, there are many possibilities to become involved. We are soon going to select the winners that will receive funding from a call for projects under the Creative Europe program, focusing specifically on cultural heritage. I look, I look forward to the many ideas that will come from this work and that will hopefully inspire many of you to keep bringing European cultural heritage to the forefront. Finally, I'm confident that the European Year of Cultural Heritage will help us have an honest debate about the shared values that connect us and that make us stronger. Thank you very much.